What's up everybody? So we're back out of the shop with another daily vlog and guys, it's time to start working on the bevels. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to bring those bevels all the way up about three quarters of the way up the blade here. So we leave all of this cool hammer finish up here. So that's the goal. We're going to get this marked out, get the, the bevels worked on. We're going to go ahead and get the heat treat done. I don't know if I'm going to get the uh, tempering done tonight or not. The tempering process takes about two hours, maybe just a little bit over two hours. So, I mean, that, that's a long time compared to the amount of hours that I'm about to put into just getting the bevels and the heat treat done. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what I can get knocked out. But, uh, guys, we're going to do, we're going to break it down, talk about why I'm doing things the way that I'm doing it. So, let's jump into it. Let's see what we get done. Let's get it knocked out. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is just get this edge marked up with this big old magic marker. Then we're gonna take our calipers and scribe in the center line. So all I do here is I just measure the width of the blade with the calipers, divide it by two, and that gives me my measurement for scribing. And then I'll take and start kind of drawing out where I want my plunge line to be and I'll play with this and kind of figure out exactly where I want it so that it's a little bit easier to know where to tighten the plunge line jig down to. And that's where I want it to be so we're going to go ahead and start working on grinding these bevels. Now what I'll do here is I will use a kind of worn down 40 grit belt and I'll go ahead and grind a 45 degree angle on there so I'll just grind straight to that center line and then I'll feather this bevel all the way out to however high I want the bevels to come up on the side of the blade so a lot of this is going to be y'all just listening to some music while I show y'all the progression of the bevels as they work their way up the blade. And all I'm doing to get that is I'm putting a little bit more pressure as I go on the spine of the knife so that it kind of works that bevel all the way towards the spine, however far I want it, like I said. So y'all just watch this and you'll see how it progresses. One of the things that I'm focusing on here is how this bevel transitions into the tip of the blade. There are going to be times where you're going to have to pull the tang towards your body and be able to kind of rock it a little bit so that you can get that up sweep on the bevels to match where the bevels are closer to the ricasso. So you're going to have to, you're not just moving the blade straight back and forth, left to right. You're going left to right a little bit and pulling the handle a little bit to you to kind of round over the front there. And now we're going to go ahead and take this 120 grit ceramic belt and just kind of refine the bevels a little bit, get rid of some of the deep scratches before we go on to the next belt. And I'm not applying much pressure here. This is just to eliminate scratches. It's not really to remove a bunch of material. So 
Now we're going to go to the heavier scotch bright belt. And we are going to go over the whole entire knife, but this is me just focusing more on the bevels. Puts a nice finish on it, just like that. Then it's time for the sharpening choil, and I'm just using a chainsaw file to do this. It's the same file I use for pretty much every sharpening choil that I do. Sometimes I'll use the little needle files if I'm making a smaller blade, but for a big knife like this, chainsaw file is perfect. And we're just going to take the heavy scotch bright belt again and just work on the bevels just a little bit more. And then we're going to go into heat treat. So we quench that at 120 degree peanut oil. Now we are checking for the hardness with the file and it skates perfectly fine. And we want to go ahead and get some of this forge scale and uh, decarb off of here because we are going to be doing an acid etch and sometimes I'll want to leave that texture on there if I got a good even amount on both sides but for this it really only went to one side so we are going to eliminate it. You see it right there. All those little bumps. We're going to take that off with the 120 degree ceramic belt. Again, we are not applying a ton of pressure here. We don't want to mess up our bevels or put a wave in there. We're just doing enough pressure to eventually get that off there. And really paying attention to how we're moving our hands to again not mess up our nice bevels that we've already done. Now we're going to go in with that heavy scotch bright belt again and just smooth the bevels out one last time. At this point, I am going to go ahead and go over the whole entire knife, but I wanted to get to that point so that we can get it cleaned up and when we put it in our oven to temper it, we could easily see when we finally get to that straw color and know that we're good to go. So now it's time to go ahead and temper this. So we've got it clamped into our little jig that we have here. We're going to go ahead and heat it up at 375 degrees twice for two hours. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog. So this is where we're at. We got our tempering done. I want to show you all this color right here. This is that straw color that we're looking for whenever we do our tempering. Now you can see how there's a little bit of bluish purple, different little hues down here. A little bit on this side as well. All of that is just the little bit of residue and oils from my hands, even though I, for the most part, got it all clean. You can see it in the light and it's literally, it's literally just little globs from oils and things like that. You see how it doesn't run the edge here? It actually stops where my fingernail is right there. So it's not the edge, it's just up past it. And that's literally just oils. So we're looking for this right here for the straw color. And that's it. But guys, this is starting to shape up and to be 
an awesome, awesome, awesome looking knife. We got that hammer finish. I cannot wait to really start getting into the next few steps of this. Uh, we are going to do a acid etch and stone wash on this. So next video, we're going to work on doing the acid etch, doing the stone wash, and then we're going to start the handle scales. We're going to get them uh, pressed together because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little different. So the handle scales are going to be G10 and liners, but I'm going to do them a different way than I've seen a lot of people do them. And I'm going to make my own handle scales out of a few thinner pieces of handle scale material. So y'all will see that. It's going to be really cool. Uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out whenever I go to contour them. But y'all just be looking forward to that. Guys, hey, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. Guys. Come on now. If you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button so you get notified for when we do the next step in this. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Guys, y'all stay safe out there. I'll see y'all tomorrow.